draw your attention to three things that you have to be mindful of. But subsequently, I'll take you on a series on the Bible woman. The Bible woman. Because the world does not know who the woman is. And so even in church, we are adopting the definition that the world is giving. And the de definition of the world is sensual. It's not scriptural. It's not rooted in the oracles of God. The one who created us is the only one that has the authority to tell us who we are. And until we know who we are from his perspective, our lives will not count. And this is why this platform will give us the opportunity. When I'm doing that series, I'll take out time to show you some of the women that the Lord shone his light on as definitions of his, the, of his mind as touching the woman. Because there are some women and you will see what they mirrored. You know, most of you are women, but probably you have not taken out time to study them. And there are six women in scripture that you must mirror their essence in order to be complete as a woman. That's what it means to be a Bible woman. What motherhood is. You know, I've taught you before that a woman grows through four stages. There's the stage of the girl where your glory is your looks. As you approach puberty, you discover that there are certain features that begin to manifest that makes you unique and different. And you discover that your pride your, will anchor on all of that. And that's beautiful. And for a lifetime, there will have to be a girl in you. Even when you become a grandmother, there will be traces of a gear in you. You can't, you can't forego it because it is part of you. But you see, as you transit, there will be a need for you to mature from it. You will retain the residue of it. In fact, that will bring flavor to family. Sometimes, what makes a family a healthy environment is the fact that your husband can find that gear in you. That's the one he teases. And if you cannot find that gear in you, there will be a problem in that family. Because no matter how mature you are, you will still retain the residue of a gear. But you must mature to become a lady. And the power of a lady is the excellency of her mind. The whole idea about empowerment, the training, the teaching today, is to help activate that mind aspect of you, using spiritual powers. Because you are relevant to society. And as I show you from scripture, you will see it. Most institutions that do well, when you check, there are women at the background working. There is a flavor women bring into systems. That's why God, after God created the world, created the man, he said, I'll make a helper for him. Because that ability to balance systems and civilization, a very large extent of that wisdom is resident with women. And so women have to rise up to become president, to become leaders, heads of institutions and organizations, support systems at every strata of human civilization. But that will not happen except as they mature from girls to ladies. There has to be something in your mind. There has to be some level of creativity, wisdom, discretion in you. You cannot be without that level of creativity and productivity. So it's either you have the intelligence to work in an academic environment, or you have creativity to start a business, or you have creativity to advise and manage institutions at leadership level but by all means there must be something in your head that's the second level of maturity for a woman and then there is the third level where you become a wife at the level of a wife you come under the ordinances of god you must learn the ways of god you must understand the mind of god you must bring yourself to live according to the dictates of god that means you no longer live based on how you feel at the level of a girl, you live based on your feelings. You dress based on your feelings. You talk based on your feelings. But when you mature to become a wife, the laws of God defines you. Because now you are becoming part of God's agenda. And there's a role you play there. A mother in Israel. So you must understand 
how Sarah lived her life to be able to come to that stage where she was able to give birth to the promise, to give birth to the purpose of God. She was the one who nurtured Isaac to carry the heritage of God. The second woman you need to be and understand is Ruth. Ruth. Most of you know about Ruth that followed Naomi, the daughter-in-law of Abimelech. Ruth's life revealed to us who a wife is. And every woman must master what it means. If you study Ruth's life, the major indicator of her life is loyalty. The indicator in Sarah's life is sacrifice. But the indicator in Ruth's life is loyalty. She was so loyal that even when their husbands died and Naomi told them, go to your parents. She said, where you go, I will go. Your land is my land. What you eat is what I will eat. Now, according to scripture, when your husband dies, you are free. And most young women who have lost their husbands, they have the liberty to remarry. And in my own counsel, they should. Because there are lots of challenges in life that you need covering for. Right? But her life reveals to you the dexterity, the quality of loyalty that a woman should have. If there's one thing that you should have is trust, they should be able to trust you. That's what it means to be a woman. And that's what the life of Ruth revealed. Loyalty is trustworthiness. The ability to be dependable, that you can be relied on. And so God sees all of those markers in his daughters. On one side, there must be sacrifice. That is the life of Sarah. On another side, there should be trustworthiness and loyalty. That's the life of Ruth. And then you have another woman called Deborah. She's the warrior woman. That's the woman that has the power to challenge the forces of life. Is a dogged woman. Is a warrior woman. At one point, you are submissive. At another point, you are a warrior. Because if you are not a warrior, the hawk will steal your children. You know, when the hawk comes for the children, the mother hen fights. There is no basis for which the mother hen should fight an eagle or to fight a hawk. But if the warrior in her, it does not come alive, she cannot defend her heritage. Meanwhile, you are the builder of the home. Meanwhile, you are the helper of your husband. So if you don't know how to fight, another woman can destroy your home. If you don't know how to fight, the destiny of your children will be lost. If you don't know how to fight, everything God promised to that home that he has planted you will be lost. And so most times, the reason the heritage of God does not come to pass is because there are women who are not warriors. Imagine, as mighty as Moses was, it was the mother that groomed her. As mighty as Samson was, it was the mother that groomed her. As mighty as John the Baptist was, it was the mother that groomed her. Even Jesus had to remain under the tutelage of Mary. From the time Jesus was born to the time he did his first miracle, you will not hear the name of Joseph. Jesus was learning under Joseph. He was a carpenter. But most of the sensitive things about his ordination, it was the woman that saw it. And that's how it has been. When Samson was to be conceived, she was the one the angel appeared to. When Mary was to conceive Jesus, she was the one the angel appeared to. Even when Jesus was to do his first miracle, she said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. That means she knows that I have not taught this thing on his life. It is time for it to manifest. She guarded it with jealousy. Some women don't know how to guard even their homes. Some women don't, need to, don't know how to guard the heritage on their children's lives. So when you find wayward children in society today, it's because they were wise, but they were not warriors. They cook food for their husband, they satisfy their husbands, but the children become wayward. What God promised, they, even the family, never come to pass. Because being a warrior in this context is an intercessor. It's not to fight, it's not to quarrel. You must master how to channel your emotion to the altar. Your, your womb is not only physical, it's also spiritual. And so instead of mass using your energy for argument, for talking, for gossip, you should have a place on the altar. That's where you fight. Every woman must be a traveler. If you don't travel, your husband will not fulfill purpose. If you don't travel, your children will not fulfill purpose. That is why if you are not a warrior, you are not a Bible woman.
the Bible said, and Deborah rose at a time when Israel was in captivity. It was so bad that people could not use the highway. Are you crazy? You'll be killed. People were traveling in bush parks. Nobody dared stood, but a woman rose up and she gathered Israel together. And on the strength of her priesthood, the heritage of God was delivered to Israel. So as a warrior woman, you must have a place on the altar and insist that everything God said about your children, your husband, and your family must come to pass. And then over and above that, you must also instill that in your own generation you have a stake. I don't believe in the, tender, in the talk that women should be housewives, adding no value to society. That's not true. The Bible begs to differ. Deborah was a national figure and she was the wife of Labidot. So a woman can be married and still be relevant in society. But for you to do that, you must be a warrior. Because society will frown at you. If you say you want to be senator, they will say, what do you be? An ordinary woman like you. If you say you want to be president, they will look at you and say, president where? Who do you think you are? It will take the warrior in you to refuse that I cannot be intimidated. Because that I submit to my husband does not mean I don't have a part in society. There are two different things. There are two different assignments. And so you must become a warrior to defend the heritage of God, give it to your family, and also to play your part in your generation. That is the life of Deborah. And there are many women in church today who have not been awoken to that reality. Then you have the life of Esther. That's the royal woman. Every woman must be a queen. When you find some women, you know that they don't even have value for themselves. Even the inner wear they use, they can't wash it. You come to the house, there is cup on the on the chair. You see the children, the pap, the boy drank in the morning, is still on his mouth. You enter a bedroom, it has not been kept for two weeks. There's no excellence. There's no ecstasy. There's no royalty. Listen, one of the war that defends you is your looks. There's a level of gravity a woman carries that if you see her, you can't touch her. But when you find women in a generation, there is laxity. They are either naked or you can't find dignity with them. A woman sits down carelessly. She talks carelessly. She's not kept. She comes around you. You have all kinds of smell. And you are wondering, who is this? Somebody is fighting somewhere. You are there. That shouldn't be you. See, there should be nobility. Know that there's a level of courtesy and decorum that your life should command. That's who a woman is. A woman is a delicate creation. Delicate. It's an honor for you to access the attention of a woman. It's an honor for you to access the body of a woman. That's why you see that people go crazy to touch women. There's something about you that is sacred, that is royal, that is excellent. Many kings have been destroyed because they wanted to touch some women. That's how sacred the woman is. Listen, don't trivialize yourself. Be deliberate about how you appear. Be deliberate about what you say. Be deliberate about where you are seen. Don't be seen everywhere. Be about purpose. Be about your calling. Be about destiny. Let your life be invested in something important. A woman is so special that even if she's not doing anything, her body alone is value. Just your body is value. A woman may not go to school, but she can buy anything she wants with her body. And that's why those who are prostitutes defy their body. Because they know that there's value in just their body. Only a woman, a woman is the only creation on earth that may not have anything to offer, but her body is great value. It speaks of royalty. And so when you discover it, you will treat yourself with dignity. You will treat yourself with courtesy. You will treat yourself with excellence. Don't be careless. You were born and created to operate the life of nobility. The glory of a king is number one, the multitude that attend to him. And number two is his queen. That's why if you study the life of Esther, after the king conquered battles and was celebrating and all his great men sat down, he said, go and call the queen, Vashti. Let her just come. Let my, my, my mighty men see her. 
as far as the king was concerned it was an honor for his mighty men to see her all she wanted her to do just come and parade yourself let them see you because it was like his greatest trophy so he hid it and the woman did not know that she was royal the bible woman is a royal woman. number five you see the life of Dorcas. it speaks of generosity you must have a large heart you know the problem of many women they are myopic their heart is tiny you must discipline and train yourself to enlarge your heart those days when we're growing when it is one o'clock you see all our friends begin to come from everywhere because they know my mother will cook they will eat people who didn't have food they will come around and my mother will give them food and if they misbehave she will warn and caution them as if they are children today some of those people are doing well in life they still return to her as a mother to them that's how the heart of a woman is if your heart is not large it will narrow the vision of your husband and even the vision God has given you will be narrowed. Listen, learn the way of generosity. Every child around you is your child. Open your heart to address them, to help them, to lead them, to empower them. When Dorcas died and Peter was summoned, there was one testimony. Look at this garment, she gave it to us. Look at that garment, she gave it to us. The problem with most women is that they are too myopic. They are too stingy. And so because they are narrow-minded, God can't commit kingdom to them. There are many great assignments they can't do. See, men have marginalized women in this world. That's why you see that many women are not doing great things. But apart from that also, many women are not doing great things because their heart is too small for great things. Selfishness, self-centeredness. You cannot find two girls living in one room for three months. There must be quarrel, there must be argument, there must be something. But you can find seven men in one tiny apartment for ten years. Depending on themselves and coexisting. Put two sisters in one room. After two weeks, there's already a fight. There's already gossip. There's already malice. There's already backbite. The heart is too small. How can God commit a generation to such people? And so if you want to be part of those that God can entrust a generation to, you must learn to enlarge your heart. That's the life of Dorcas. And it is the life of the Bible woman. Are you following? Sarah is a mother and her life is sacrifice. Ruth is a wife. Her life is loyalty. Deborah is a, is a what? A warrior. Her life is intercession. I wish I had time to show you some scriptures here. Go and read about Abigail, Nabas wife. When the husband misbehaved, the woman gathered resources. David was coming to destroy the whole lineage. She ran, ran and met David ahead and entreated for her husband. David said, if not for your sake, he said, by this time tomorrow, that man would not even have had one child. I would have killed everybody. And eventually, when the foolish man died, David helped himself. And she eventually gave birth to Solomon. That level of... See, well, there is something in her. Do you know the name of Naba? It means foolish. A childish man. She made the mistake of marrying a foolish man, but there were princes in her. And it took her wisdom in intercession to achieve that destiny. Deborah. And then Esther is what? Royalty. Her life is defined by royalty and hospitality. Dorcas is generosity. She was indeed a helper. I will take time to do a series and show you these things, precept upon precept, so that you will use it to define your life. Because all of these things will show you, all of these things will show, that's what makes you a complete woman. I forgot to add one more, Elizabeth. That is tenacity, 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 
tenacity. She was both prophetic and tenacious. She didn't have a child on the old age, but she knew God would not forget about her. When she eventually gave birth, the husband was dumb. She stood up and said, his name is John. All the kingsmen came and said, no, nobody has bought this name in this lineage. She said, no, I picked it from heaven. I'm not being creative. That's a woman that has vital connection with heaven. And because of that, nothing on earth could break her. If you find women today, any little thing, they are broken. And they justify that I'm just a woman. They don't know who they are. And I can show you many scriptures where you find tenacious women. Tenacious. And I can continue. I just pick six to help you understand certain things. If I go further, I can add Mary and show you chastity. The Bible woman is a holy woman. She's a pure woman. She's a chaste woman. You can't allow anything to defy you. But today, even in church, you can't find purity. Somebody enters a relationship. After two weeks, she comes to you and starts apologizing. What happened? We slept with ourselves. Slept. Do you know who you are? This body that one non-entity comes from nowhere because he talks sweet, he slept with you. Listen, men are sexually weak. Even if the man makes advances at you, there's something in you that will make you hold yourself and say don't. Because he is trying to break into your territory. You are the ones, to, you are the one to build the wall around you. That guy is a looter. He's just thinking pleasure. But you will tell him no. There's a boundary you cannot cross because there is chastity here. There is sanity here. That's what makes you a Bible woman. He said holy women. That's how the Bible called them. Holy women. Holy women. As we pray, we must understand that we are important to God. We must understand that we have a place in God's agenda and the place we occupy is very unique and we cannot afford to take it for granted. Can we bow our heads and pray? Your prayer this afternoon is simple. Lord, make me a woman of God. Make me a woman of God. Make me a woman of God. Rakatea Suza Havak Zeziza Ila Managa Baraki da Borask Mendo Rapila Uza Kavakai Neli Lakora Mandaki Barako Ragabaka. Barakida Aragadas Ali Merekatoria Baragata. Our world needs women. After the earth was created, he said it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make for him a suitable helper. Without women, creation cannot be complete. And so you must play your part. But there are codes, there are ordinances. There is a way of the spirit. There are written orders that your life must be ruled in order to become that woman that God can depend on. Make me the woman of God. Say likewise, holy women. Ah. I must be a holy woman of God. the flavors of the women, the matriarchs of old that represented God's agenda, lived under the order his ordinances and mirrored his purpose. Let those flavors come upon my life. Even as Sarah was known as mother in Israel, even as Deborah was known as the warrior woman, they fought to defend the heritage.
knowledge of God. Ruth was defined by loyalty, commitment to the ordinances of God. What a beauty her life demonstrated. She became the mother of Jesse, the wife of Boaz. And it was Jesse that better David the king. There are things locked on your inside, but there is a becoming for those things to find expression. The Bible spoke graciously about Esther the queen. It was through her royal status that she delivered Israel. Israel would have been wiped out, although Mordecai was an intercessor, but he took Esther. Because there is a place the woman can enter. By reason of your royalty, there are corridors you can enter that not many can. When she stood before the king, the Bible said the king found favor in her. And said, whatever you want, I will give you, even up to half of the kingdom. She didn't ask for diamond. She didn't ask for a jewel because she was already royal. Her value was not in the necklace. She asked for the life of the Israelites. Our women today are only interested in designers. Nothing wrong in looking good. But are you, are you royal? What are the things that define your value? That's why most of them are prostitutes for money. They are naked for acceptance. Esther knew that she was royal. She would have asked for a kingdom. She would have asked for diamonds. She would have asked for gold. But she said, save Israel. There's an ethic that my people should be wiped out. And on her account, Israel, the people of God survived. We heard about Elizabeth, a prophetic woman that knew the heart of God for her family. When John was born, she said his name shall be called John. I know what God wants to do. I know. I am not naive. I know the heart of the Father. We heard about Mary, the mother of Jesus, our Lord. There was a virgin. Go there. He said the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. The power of the highest shall overshadow you. That thing that shall be formed in you shall be called the son of the highest. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. The reason many women are not betting things is because the Holy Ghost cannot come upon them. How can the Holy Ghost come upon you if your tabernacle is defined? Her garment was pure. Her body was kept. A generation where women give up their virginity for hair, for ring, for wristwatch. What a shame. The Bible woman was a man. connected online listen we are not doing what we are doing just to say we to have an arm called women ministry no God sent us to raise mature believers and we have recognized the sensitive role that this gender represents when God created man the Bible says male and female he created them both man cannot fulfill God's agenda alone there must be the balance of the woman I pray for you today. Everything in your life that is negating the glory of God that makes you that woman of God, it is removed today. I pray for you today. Everything stopping you from being a suitable helper is removed today. I pray for you today. Everything in your life stopping you from being a blessing to yourself, your family, and your generation is removed even right now. And I decree over you the forces of the fallen man that reduces his potency and his glory that is working mightily in this generation. It will not find expression in your life. The Lord makes you a blessing 
and a joy of many generations. By you, the heritage of God in your family, in your nation, and in your generation will be preserved. And by you, the purposes of God as touching his kingdom will find expression. You will not be a waste. You will not be a non-entity. You will make your mark in your generation. And from you, kings will be born. The mighty will rise. The glory of the Lord will be seen. I pray particularly for the warrior dimension. There's so much vacuum that women cannot occupy because of the forces negating them. I remember Hannah. When there was need for a child, the Bible says she prayed and groaned. And it was on her account that Samuel emerged. I remember the wife of Noah. It was on her account that Samson much we need women to fill in the gaps there are too many gaps that men can't fill but it will take the move of the spirit through power tenacity rockedness yet clothed in humility for that to happen i pray for you the hand of god makes you an answer to your generation so let it be written so let it be established in Jesus precious name you are supposed to have communion so we round up when you go and spend time to pray I will do this series and I will turn it to a book so that many will read because there's a gap mm. the world will become better if Bible women emerge there are too many few of you. Too few in government. Too few in ministry. Too few in leadership. We must fill in the camp. And it will not be gifted you. Trust me. It will be end. I'm telling you. It will be fought for. It will be taken. Not breaking laws. But through the values of the kingdom. The Bible said on the night that he was betrayed. He said he took bread and gave thanks. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take it. He said, This is my body, which is given for you. So Jesus admonished that we break bread every time we gather. Concerning the apostles, he said they went from house to house breaking bread. And so when we break the bread, we proclaim the lost death. What does it mean to proclaim the lost death? It's to affirm through faith that he died for you and he rose from the dead for you. So all the blessings and the blessedness of the finished works of Christ is enforced in your life. And so as you break this bread today and eat, I decree that sickness leaves your body. And the blessings of the resurrected Christ becomes your personal experience. Thank you, Father, for this bread. We receive it with thanksgiving, and by faith we eat it as the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let it be established in Jesus' precious name. Go ahead and break it. And he said after they had eaten, in the same manner, he said he took the cup, and he gave thanks. And he said, take, drink. He said, this is the blood of the new covenant he says, as often as you drink it you proclaim my death as often as you drink it you affirm my sacrifice he said do this often often in remembrance of all he represents in your life and you know the bible said they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the words of their testimony so this is an enforcer and this is a defense against darkness as you sub this cup this day Every attack on your life is ended. And everything the blood represents, victory, forgiveness of sins, remission, all of that becomes your, your experience. And so, Father, we thank you for the cup. We drink it in obedience and honor of the finished works of Christ. So we ask that by faith, it becomes the blood of Jesus 
representing all he, he did to save us and to make us accepted in the beloved. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Go ahead and drink. Pray in tongues for one minute. Appreciate the Lord. Talk to him. Appreciate him. I want to proclaim the blessings of God upon you. The everlasting blessings. The overflowing blessings. The unending blessings. Holy. And forever you are God. We bless you, Lord, you are holy. And forever you are God. And forever you are God. We bless you, Lord, you are holy. You are holy. And forever you are God. And forever you are God. We bless you, Lord, you are holy. You are holy. And forever you are God. You are holy. You are holy. And forever you are God. And forever you are God. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. You are holy. And forever you are God. Hallelujah. 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 